Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We begin with hundreds of people coming together tonight in Dearborn Heights to honor the life of a seventh grader. Off the top at 11, 12 year old Joey Smith died after being hit by a car last week. He was hit riding his bicycle home following the football game at Annapolis High School. About 300 people gathered for a candlelight vigil at the high school. The event was organized by the Annapolis seniors. Family, friends and supporters came together for a moment of silence before sharing stories about Joey. I just want to let everybody know my nephew is a real genuine person. And so many memories from him growing up. I haven't seen this many people in a long time to gather for something like this. And it's unfortunate. After being hit, Joey was taken to the hospital where he died from his injuries. The driver who hit him did stay at the scene. Police say speed, alcohol, drugs were not a factor. There is a GoFundMe set up to help the family with funeral expenses. We've posted a link on clickondetroit.com. About two and a half weeks now before Election Day in Michigan has seen a massive increase in both absentee ballots requested and ballots that have been returned so far. Mara McDonald live in the News Center area tonight. Mara, over the years, uh, those who vote at the polls versus those who vote absentee, this has changed drastically. It really has shifted, Devin, and the guys and women who, who crunched the data on this will tell you in Michigan, 80% of GOP voters vote at the polls in person versus Democrats, where 55% vote absentee. First, let's talk about some numbers. As of this week, the Michigan Department of State says it has received 1.6 million absentee ballot requests and 432,000 plus have been returned. Now, last gubernatorial in 2018 at this same time, look at the numbers and look at the difference. We're looking at, you know, the potential of another record election. That's a lot of absentee ballots to count, and typically the absentees are inputted later in the night. In Detroit this year, that will not be the case, and it's due to changes in the law which allow clerks two days prior to the election to prepare the absentees for tabulating. We'll begin tabulating those absentee ballots, and every ballot that we have processed and tabulated up until 8 o'clock, we'll have the opportunity to download that data, upload it onto a flash drive, deliver it to the Department of Elections where they will uh, transmit it via telephone line to Wayne County so that you'll have early reports on absentees. How early? Probably before 10. It will be the in-person votes that will roll in gradually throughout the evening. But that's only what Detroit is doing. Each community charts its own course. And typically, absentees come in in a big chunk at the end. I think we're on, on track for having another situation like we did in 2020. So what you're going to see is early returns are going to be very favorable to Republicans because again, 80% of them are voting at the ballot box. Um, as absentees start to be counted and come in, then potentially the margin of victory that Republicans think they have is going to, to dwindle. And again, that's just a repeat of 2020. Back here live, I can tell you that when I started reporting 30 years ago, every election night was the same thing. First question, when you looked at those vote totals, are the absentees counted in here? And if they were not, you knew that there were going to be a tremendous amount of more conservative voters that were going to have to be counted into the mix. Michigan GOP used to have a tremendous absentee ballot program. We're live in the news center tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four. This is fascinating, Mara. So Dennis Darnoy is talking about what we've referred to now as the red mirage, uh, the switch. If Detroit's new system works, though, it would be the opposite in Detroit then, theoretically, right? Theoretically, it would be the opposite in Detroit, although I would argue that you wouldn't expect to have a huge Republican exactly. you know, turnout in, in Detroit anyway. Right, right. Um, but it certainly would not be, you know, 2 a.m. The absentees are coming in in, say, like, you know, what we've seen in the past. You have a tight Senate race and you're wondering where it's going to go and you get this huge dump of ballots. That That is not going to roll this time. Yeah. They're going to have those absentees up front at the beginning of the evening. Gives us a lot to watch on the uh, election night bingo card. All right, Mara. Well, let's turn to the forecast here. Another chilly night, but that warm up we've mm -hmm. been talking about is just about here. Let's check in with Kim Adams and the big change headed our way, Kim. 
A very nice change. Usually when we say a change is coming, it's not a good thing. This time it is a very good thing. Already any moisture we had throughout the afternoon quickly moved out. We even got some late day sunshine. But now that we have those clear skies, that makes our temperatures drop even lower because we just don't have anything to insulate us. Now in the city, it's a little bit warmer. 36 at city airport. It's still 41 at airport uh, at the airport. So when we expect lows in the mid 30s, that's for the airport. That's what we forecast for. That's where they keep the records. But you can see already the suburbs are down to about 32 in Mount Clemens, 30 in Pontiac, freezing in Ann Arbor and 34 in Howell. As you send the kids off to the bus stop this uh, tomorrow morning, it is going to be so cold. I can't even talk it's so cold 35 degrees in the morning by the afternoon almost 30 degrees warmer with highs tomorrow in the mid 60s we're not done there yet let me take a look at this temperature trend we're going to be in the 70s but will it stay dry we'll talk about our next chance for rain coming up in the forecast a Livonia family desperate for help tonight after their dog Velvet disappears. Pamela Osborne live tonight in Redford and Pam this family turned to social media to find Velvet and that's where the story took a turn they certainly did, Kimberly. Take a look. This Facebook post has been shared more than 800 times. A woman who saw that gave them a tip about where Velvet was. That eventually led them here to the Dollar Tree on Six Mile Road. Still no Velvet. They're hoping you can help. And the thought that somebody's not taking good care of her just terrifies me. And my son's distraught too. Julie Wolt is not okay. She's heartbroken and desperate to find her seven year old Yorkie Shih Tzu mix, Velvet. Her buddy Precious is missing her too. She spent the whole week wandering around here looking for, coming to me, like, where is she? Velvet disappeared from her home in Livonia on Monday. Put her out. Went to bring her back in and she was just gone. She drove around looking for Velvet with no luck. Then she turned to Facebook. That same night, she got a message from a woman in Detroit who said a neighbor of hers had Velvet. Julie was surprised by what the woman said next. Because they had been walking around the neighborhood trying to get people to take her. She had proof. Here Velvet is on the woman's ring doorbell camera wearing the same leopard printed bandana that she was wearing when she disappeared. Julie's boss knocked on the man's door. Velvet was not there, but the man was. He claimed he took Velvet to the Dollar Tree. Saw this couple in a big blue van, old van, um, and that they were talking about taking it. While inside, he says the couple drove off with Velvet all within an hour of her being gone. I'm not sure how a person can do that to a living being. And they've started posting these posters all over town with their information. They've also enlisted the help of Livonia police who are investigating. Julie says for anybody that may have her, if you just hand her over, turn her into someone. She won't ask any questions at all, and she's offering a reward for Velvet's safe return. Reporting live tonight in Redford, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. All right, Pam. The Detroit Pistons assistant general manager is on leave tonight amid allegations of workplace misconduct. That's according to an ESPN report that says the allegations against Rob Murphy involve a former female employee. Murphy was promoted to assistant general manager this past summer, was previously the head coach at Eastern Michigan University for 10 years. So far, there's been no comment from the Detroit Pistons. A grandmother is accused of stamping her two-year-old grandson. Happened just before two this morning when he was in the care of his 56-year-old grandmother. She allegedly stabbed him at her apartment complex on Chrysler Drive near Warren in Detroit. His parents say she may be struggling with mental health issues. Police say she was arrested, taken into custody. Tonight, the child is recovering at home with his parents. In just hours, a Southfield man in custody in connection with the death of a teenage girl found shot to death on I-94 will face a judge. Today, the Macomb County prosecutor signed off on a two-count warrant for the 20-year-old in connection with the killing of Taya Land. Her body was found Friday on I-94 near 8 Mile in St. Clair Shores. He's scheduled to appear before a judge tomorrow morning, and we will be there to bring you the latest. We've got an orange barrel alert for the weekend with three major freeways yep. set to close. A lot of barrels. Yeah, those closures are going to include northbound 75 from 8 Mile to 375. That starts at 7 a.m. Saturday. That'll last until 5 p.m. Sunday. Eastbound I-94 from Michigan Avenue to Cecil Street. That will start at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That'll last until Monday at 5 a.m. And the westbound lanes of 696 from Telegraph 
over to I-275. Those will be closed starting tomorrow at 8 p.m. and that too will last until Monday at 5 a.m.